seats for the first outdoor graduation ceremony. I am so glad you guys are here. A big round of applause. This is a unique experience for the school. Uh, I want to say a special thanks to this class for making this happen. You guys are stubborn as hell. You pushed for this. You begged for this. You were tired of being separate. You wanted to have a ceremony together, even for just five minutes, Mr. Krasny. Ten minutes. I'm so glad you guys are here. A oh, big boy. round of applause. This is. We got it. There will be technical glitches. Okay, it's going to be a unique day, and the balloons may pop, so don't worry. But thank you for your stubbornness, and we heard you, and we are also so happy that we are able to have this gathering together before the summer hits. Um, I want everybody to be aware that this is a special day for IAS because we have actually been in existence for 30 years. This is our 30-year anniversary. Um, when you think about it, that is actually a pretty long time for an international school to exist through all the turbulent uh, changes that Poland has gone through, the world has gone through, and we're still here and we are thriving. So you mark a very big milestone as the 30th graduating class of IAS. And I wanted to have the owner of the school, the person who built the foundation of the school, Dr. Ishak Husseini, say a few words about that. And he is going to show up shortly and give you his farewell message, VLE style. So please log in and we will await for Dr. Ishak Husseini. Thanks, Matt. Let me get started. Reading and receiving information about the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic confirms one thing. We are resilient and learn to live with and overcome anything life throws at us. A staggering 1.6 billion students are out of school in 161 countries. The number of dropouts and losses in learning is posing a great threat to the world of education. But yet again, life mantra is we can live with the pandemic and we shall overcome it and thrive. Dear students, parents, teachers and well-wishers, welcome to this positive new world at the International American School. Beating all odds we stand tall in providing uninterrupted and unique virtual learning experience to our students. Modern technology facilitates the possibility to continue what truly matters to us amidst the pandemic. At IAS, we continue to grow, we continue to learn, and we are an undeniable proof watching you all graduate and get ready to move forward in life. Dear IAS students, this is the most unusual speech I have ever had to give. After 30 years of speaking to you students and parents directly, today I speak to you in an unconventional platform. The message I wish to deliver is as always clear. Let me tell you something. The great Steve Jobs once said, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. With this in mind, during this closing ceremony, let me give you few simple suggestions for possible success. Broaden your mind and start thinking as a citizen of the world. Remember that an individual's qualification is not defined by his or her nationality, but by what he or she has achieved in life. As a product of IAS, you are already truly international. Very few can match your integrity globally thanks to your fantastic multicultural experience at IAS. Healthy self-confidence is key, not to be confused with overconfidence or arrogance. Self-confidence opens doors and encourages you to take up challenges and more likely to be optimistic and motivated. 
Self-confidence and belief in oneself will help you manage your fears, solve life problems, and lead you to your ultimate goal. Never stop believing in yourself. Lastly, IAS has inculcated in you a strong personality, ambition, sincerity, responsibility, punctuality, modesty, and above all, trustworthiness. Share these values with friends and even foes if necessary. And never falter from the ideals that we at IAS try to instill in you. I wish all graduates of each class good luck and specifically to all graduate students graduating today, wish you success in all your future endeavors and happy and safe holidays. To returning students, we will welcome you back in September in a better and improved IAS. IAS is proving to be a role model to most schools in providing a leading education platform online. And we are so proud and happy that you are all a part of this international American school family. Have great holidays. Thank you, Dr. Husseini. We are moving on now with some memories of the last three months spent online. A very unusual experience, and hopefully this will bring a smile to your faces. Greetings, IS community. This is Principal Kras. Hello. 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 Hey, everybody. Just getting ready for the next. Good morning, grade one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the very first IAS Scholars Cal. Today we will start with and we use it to talk about possible situations and their consequences in the future. Okay everyone, welcome to our debate number two. So the topic for today's classes is uh, education and it's also connected with our previous one, demographic change. Ivan, do you want to read this one? Uh, so ourselves, so ourselves here. Uh, the question. With learning a few concepts about electrochemistry, and then as we move on, we'll move on to database questions and also a little project work for you. Uh, do you have your hobby homework? The farmer. The farmer cat. Patricia, uh, look at this concept map created by these authors. And what I'd like you to do is um, identify what the main topic is. Hey, this had classes recorded in the past for your other classes? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't so, remember. Have they explained why? About the dorm. Stit. Got it? Zero point? Uh, zero point forty five uh, fourteen. No, it's zero point four five one three. Okay? Ah, okay. Uh, this one, okay. Change direction. Change direction. I and I will show you as examples how you use all those formulas. Okay, so this is when we use it's, the sign. It's fine. Trying to demonstrate one example of paraphrasing. Loud, stubborn, jealous, funny, silly, a bit naughty. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a nice weekend. Bye. 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 You too. Bye. Bye -bye. Thank you, bye. bye. See you soon. Bye. Thank you for your patience with the last three months of the VLE. I think this might be the future, though, as well. It's not totally behind us. Um, but look at everything that we did online. Very adaptable species. Um, we're going to announce the winners now for the different awards there is a best student a best classmate and the student who exhibited the most growth from each grade and for you guys too but we're starting with grade one 
Uh, the best student was Liliana Koju. The best classmate was Joshna, Caroline Elias. And the student who exhibited the most growth was Bushra Hamer. From grade two, the best student was Bula Etim. And the best classmate was Ekpeziva Icha, or Icha. And the student who had the most growth was Arina Kabibulina. Grade three, Gabia Kazokaite was the best student. Nur Hana Nazul Azha, best classmate. And Neha Seti had the most growth. And the last grade for Dembego 12, the best student, Paul Balakrishnan, best classmate, Liliana Lublinsky, and the student with the most growth, Victor Hainal. And that's everybody from grades one through four. And I think we'll just go to the farewell message, the farewell message from the student of the month that we picked for the entire school, which is Paul Balakrishnan. I'm Paul from fourth grade. I'm representing grades pre-K G to fourth grade. I feel it's the right time to thank all teachers who sacrificed their time, share the knowledge, the word of encouragement throughout this year. First, I would like to I would like to thank our homeroom teacher, Miss Natalia, for an ind indescribable effort she has rendered to us this whole year. When I came to the school on the first day, I was a little nervous. She is the first teacher I met, and she made the day extremely cool to me. She I got student of the month. The credit goes to Miss Natalia. Thank you, Miss Natalia. I take an opportunity to thank to thank Miss Sarah, who shared her precious knowledge in writing and reading. La in ISA, my score in reading was above fifth grade level. This credit only goes to Miss Sarah, who taught me how I need to do reading comprehension during VLE. Miss Sarah who said encouraging comments about me about my homework. She was an encouraging teacher the whole year. Thank you, Miss Sarah. I thank PE teachers because once I was so scared of water. They encouraged me to swim. Now I love to swim. I thank Miss Veronica, our teacher, who teach who taught me techniques of art. This helped me to get third third place in our competition this year. I thank Miss Eva for teaching me in the in the art of voice modeling. This helped me to take part in drama and helped me to do my best. I thank music teachers for I thank the music teacher, Miss Alina, for encouraging me to play the piano. Mr. Knox, thank you for, for teaching us exercise and playing soccer during Wednesday clubs. Thank you, Miss Veronica, for the opportunity and Miss Sarah, Miss Veronica and Miss Sarah created to, to take part in Book Week Challenge. That was a great week for me. I enjoyed it. I thank Miss Yagoda for teaching our, our KG students who learned how to work individually in the classroom and also to be bold to take part in any competition. Thank you, Miss Yagoda. I also thank Miss Celeste for working hard with our first grade. First, first graders, encouraging the students to participate in different assignments. Your commitment is incredible, Ms. Celeste. Ms. Agnieszka, for your commitment in teaching Polish the whole year is great. Thank you, Miss. I thank all the teachers who worked extremely hard. Even my parents appreciate all the teachers. Last but not least, I thank my classmates, my friends, for being nice to me all the time. I thank my, my friends, fourth graders, for our team spirit all this year. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Wow. I think in eight years he might be the president. Um, we're moving on to grade five. The best student, Alicia Jika. Yes. I think so. The best classmate was Tepi Nguyen. And the student who exhibited the most growth, Mohan Almutariri. A little round of applause for them. Grade six, the best student, Josh Hino Aldias. Uh, best classmate, Antonina Gowen. And the student with the most growth, Glynis Balakrishnan, Paul's sister. Grade seven, the best student, Pola Slosek. The Sloseks are here. Best classmate, Bianca Jika. 
and the most growth, Patricia Granasco. And for grade eight, the last class of the middle school, best student, Luca Brasco, uh, best classmate, Zofia Goen, and the student with most growth, Jacobo Markey. And representing the middle school as the student of the month and her farewell message is Pola Schlosek. Hello everyone. I am happy to be representing grades five through eight and delivering this farewell message. This here is one that we will never forget. The pandemic can be compared to a new book we kept picked out at random since we have no idea how it will continue or how it is going to end. But despite all that, we are all part of history that is going to be remembered for a very long time. Everything that we do in quarantine, the new hobbies we're trying to find, and the online lessons and everything else is going to be in history books one day. So no matter how hard it is now, we are all making history. I hope everybody's summer is going to be good, no matter how hard this year has been. Oh, short and sweet from Polo. Uh, ask Medi if he wants to do the pictures with the best students now. <laughs> The best classmate was Sardar Atayev, and the student who had the most growth is Zainab Erbakichi. From grade 10, the best student, Madiar Sadali. The best classmate, Tommaso Kusano, and the student who had the most growth, Marta Shiwa. From grade 11, Zofia Ovcharek was the nominated as the best student. The best classmate, Hema Pokala, and the student with the most growth, Jiawen Li. And if you'd like, since you guys have not been involved in the action, I can announce for grade 12 now. That's okay. Uh, so I'll have you come up on stage for your medal. Uh, so these were selected by your teachers, and the best student was voted Mr. Cedric Russell Roberts. Congratulations, Russell, a model student as uh, from the from the day you walked in IAS. Well deserved. Well, actually, I don't. I didn't know you way back when. Uh, the best classmate voted by the teachers, Mr. Vedant Harwani. Venet, there has not been an event in the history of IS since you've been at IS that you have not been involved in in some way, for better and for worse. <laughs> the student who exhibited the most growth, a big round of applause, she's come a long way, Miss Lin Jian Ru. One final award for grade 12 because you guys have completed the uh, IB and high school diploma and you've completed your CAS creativity, activity, and service. And we usually elect somebody as the CAS champion, the person who uh, did had the most meaningful extracurricular life outside of the academics. And she is also a very special student here and has been at the school for a long time and has a great spirit about her, creative in service, and as well as an activity, can Miss Bonnie Murphy come up. <laughs> Cass champion for 2019-20. But you're all champions, right? 
in my heart. Um, we are going to now have the student of the month for the high school for the year give her farewell message. And I believe that is Miss Hema Pokala. So she should be coming up shortly. Hey everyone, it's me, Hema from grade 11, and I'm very glad to be representing the high school this year. I know that the past couple of months was hard, but we did it, yay! And we couldn't have done it without the great amount of effort our teachers have put into making us sitting there doing those online classes, even though we kept trying to mute them. But on the more serious note, I am really proud to know how well our school has performed during the VLE and the entire credit goes to you teachers. We love you. Yep, I know we could have took part in these various activities that are usually conducted during this time of the year. But it wasn't until now that I realized that we can have so much fun while sitting at home. Whether it was playing shell shockers with my friends between classes or taking part in Miss Isa's super cool house activity tasks as well as the sports days challenges. To all my friends at IAS, I am going to miss that hug we share on the last day of school. But if you were to lean to the camera right now, I can give it to you. I love you and I hope to be seeing you next year. Bye. Bye, Hema. We're getting closer. Uh, we would like to also announce the winner of the house competition for 2019-20. I don't know if you guys were very excited about the houses as 12th graders on your way out. Did you participate? Anybody here? From, well, I want to. I don't want to spoil it. Um, it was a very, very close race. We, this year was the second year we've had it. We had over 30 unique events where we collected points, and it went all the way up to yesterday, a bake-off last night that ended at midnight that collected some points for the Blue House. Uh, Mr. Medi is going to show us the chart at any moment now. So we are just awaiting with incredible anticipation Everybody earned over a thousand points this year. Yes, everybody over a thousand points. The winner only won by I think 15 points. The difference between the winning team and the fourth place team was only about 40, uh, 100 points. Ladies and gentlemen, the green ice tea, second year in a row that they have won. Red blood cells came in a close second. They ran out of juice. For the second time in the year. Third place, the Bluetooth, thanks to a miraculous bake-off last night, they earned 60 points to crawl into third place. The purple team, Miss Isa Mischinska. I don't understand it. The greatest spirit in the whole school, and somehow, second year in a row, we're gonna have to clone you. It was a very great race. I hope everybody enjoyed it. That's everything now. We're ready for the grade 12 ceremony. So that means that you guys prepared something for us, I think. You prepared a montage of grade 12 moments through the years. So Mr. Medi is going to cue that up for us. Those of you who are giving your speeches, get ready. But first, we're going to take a look back through the years at this wonderful, unique class.
That was wonderful. The first student that we're going to invite up uh, has been at the school for how many years? 10 or 11 years. Um, I, my first memory of her is when she was in the fifth grade and going through, a, I, I would guess, a hippie phase with the tiara and uh, green tights. And I remember in one of my English classes, she said that she'd like to travel across the country and play guitar and sing music on the streets. That sounded pretty good to her. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Bonnie Murphy with the first commencement speech. On behalf of the class of 2020, I would like to welcome and thank everyone for coming to this year's very unique graduation ceremony. Writing this speech felt really surreal, partly because none of us really thought graduation would happen, but also because once announced, it will truly be marking the end. The end of all the deadlines, trying to escape the cleaning ladies in the winter when you didn't want to change your shoes, <laughs> writing two fairly good school plays, MUNs, Daniel's random commentary in class, Vedant and Dominic arguing with teachers about anything under the sun, messaging love in the middle of the night for help with math, and year after year meeting more and more great people at this school. It's funny because it seems like we've been waiting for this day for so long. But now that it's here, you realize how much you're going to miss all of these things. But most of all, what I'm going to miss is the feeling of knowing that I would get to see my wonderful classmates each day. As a class, we have really been through and lived through so much. In fact, our class has quite literally made history being the first year ever to escape the dreaded IV final exams. We also got to live through a beardless Dr. McBride, Mr. O'Keefe as a substitute teacher, and a very wild prom. But I already promised the teachers that I will not be disclosing those details to you. To my classmates, your people who I have grown up with, shared my best and harder times with, did some things on the weekend with, but I probably shouldn't talk about that either. And not seeing each one of you every day is not something that I want to get used to. I think in life, it's really not about where you are, but who you're with. So maybe we don't have as big of a school as ASW, or as high of an average as the British school, or the fact that one of our classrooms is located in a different building. But one thing that IAS does have, and something which I will always appreciate, is community. It's a small school, and that allowed me to really get to know so many of you to build great friendships with my peers, my teachers, even our great cleaning ladies who have known me since I was nine years old. It really is like one big family. One thing that I've learned from the past two years is that IV will do strange things to a person. You start to do things and experience side effects that you never imagined yourself doing or experiencing before, like timing your bathroom breaks, pondering whether you really exist or not in your TOK class, losing your hair at the ripe age of 18, and you may even have the occasional breakdown or two, tops three. However, in these two years, I feel like I have really grown more than ever. Unfortunately, not in the literal sense, as I am still only five foot three and can barely reach this microphone. <laughs> But mentally, over the last two years, I have learned more organization, dedication, and determination than ever before. To be honest, this year was a particularly challenging one for me. As the summer of going into my senior year, my father was diagnosed with cancer, and by the end of December, he had passed on. It made me question and rethink a lot of things, and I wasn't really sure if I even wanted to continue with school anymore. Yet through this experience, as hard as it was, I really learned that even when things seem like they couldn't get any harder, you can't give up. Ultimately, all of us sitting here are going to take different paths in life. 
doctors, teachers, lawyers, influencers, or one of us may finally discover what cream Mr. Cisse uses that allows him to never age. But one thing that all these professions have in common is that each one of us will experience hardships. No matter who you are, where you come from, how much or how little you make, no one can escape the fact that there will be obstacles on your path. But that's okay, because through them, you, learn, you develop your strengths, you persevere, and all the while you become stronger and learn new things in the process. Always remember that there is a light at the end of every tunnel, a graduation ceremony at the end of every high school program, unless like Corona, but you know, that's not that likely anymore. And that even though you may fall, you can always pick yourself back up. So leaving this school, I would like to say thank you. Thank you to my friends for the great memories. Thank you to my teachers for that help and support you gave me. And class of 2020, even though this does indeed mark the end of one very special time in our lives, it also marks the beginning of a brand new one. And one thing that we can carry with us is that we got to share this incredible journey together. It's been an amazing 10 years with you. And going forward, I truly wish you and everyone else here at IAS all the very best. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie Murphy. We will miss you. You're irreplaceable, truly. And the last of a, of a clan that has been part of IAS for many years, as her sister Linda is here to attest, we will miss the Murphy family greatly. Um, we have an alumni here, Stan Grotowski. <laughs> Stay. The next speaker uh, is Dominic. Uh, what a great guy. Uh, I, the first time, my first memory of Dominic actually was a number of years ago. And I just remember him doing this a lot, actually, at the time. It was a long time ago, Dominic, a long time ago. And how far you have come. You are maybe one of the most expressive people I've ever met. You have so much to say, bubbling with personality. Let's give it for Dominic Schlosser. Like Barry and Devil Stalin, uh, I'm uh, folding this paper. <clears throat> I struggled to choose what exactly I should bring up in this farewell to the only way of life we knew for so many years. You see, when it comes to major changes, like transition to a new era of our lives, it is difficult not to fall victim to existentialism and lose track of what needs to be said the most. Yet, despite my initial uncertainty, I quickly realized what needed to be said, no matter how ob obvious or simple, in order to summarize and bring a sense of closure to our collective journey. To do so, I would like to reminisce a little bit. The scope of this journey of ours can be measured by the progress we've made as people, just as reliably as in time that has passed. We have all, ch we have all changed considerably. When we began our education, we were just children complete blank slates. Now, after everything is said and done, we have become brilliant adults and the future of this world. During this journey, we have also made many friends and memories that will, hope, that will hopefully remain with us forever. I honestly never seen a class so positive and tightly knit in my life. My long history filled with many beautiful relationships and great anecdotes. I don't believe this was better e exemplified anywhere else than during the 2020-12 grade prom during which everyone spent their evening having a great time, playing off each other's quirks and contributing to a wonderful atmosphere. For me, someone who was part of IAS since kindergarten, this day is exceptionally special and important. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the teachers I had the pleasure of learning from for helping me progress to this point and shaping who I am today. I would also like to thank my fellow peers. Thank you so much for being so supportive, friendly, friendly, and frankly, awesome. Even though I may have seemed a little distant throughout these years, I love you guys. 
I guess the final thought I would like to end this rather sentimental speech with, uh, with uh, the speech on is this. Look to the future, but don't forget your past. Thank you. He did it his way. Next up, as soon as this student walked into the IS building, he owned the place. It didn't take him long to run for president and become the president, and he's still the president to this very, very day. If he wants to, he can be the president next year, too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel McDonough. I promise this speech will be short like me. Um, good afternoon, IS. This is your president speaking. Uh, I arrived in IS in the beginning of 11th grade. At first glance, IS seemed like one of those girls that you always like for their personality. <laughs> <laughs> IS is a small school with only a class size of 20, no more than 25 which seemed pretty normal until you learned class size also meant grade size. With these shortcomings, IS had make, makes up for it with a unique student body and staff. But parents probably don't want to hear about that. You'll probably hear more from then on. I, like to, I would like to address the class of 2020 and congratulate them for actually graduating. <laughs> Most of us will only have another three to four years of school. But well, well, others will have about not others will have the unfortunate task of taking four years of medicine, four years of pre med, pre -med bio, biomedical or something, and another four years of understudy. Seven years of internship. And seven years of internship. Good luck with that. <laughs> uh, in these past two years, I've gotten very close to this class, even to a point where one time. I got a call from a classmate in the middle of the night, making sure I was the first to know about this very special and long-awaited moment in his life. I could go on and on about these stories, but we don't have all day. I would like to pass the mic off to the smartest guy in the room and leave you one last message. Hi, my name is Jim Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker in sports analogies, they say, you know, you got to leave it all on the field or leave it all on the court if you're a basketball player. Uh, this person has left everything on the IAS hallways and classroom floor. He has given everything to the school, everything he's got. He's been at every event. He's organized most of them. Uh, wonderful heart, deep soul, Mr. Vedant Harwani. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Van Trevani, and I'm honored to have the opportunity to speak today. Thank you for all parents, students, teachers, and staff for coming or watching online. My tenure in IAS started in kindergarten, and I was a young, shy kid, introverted, unlike what I am now. Not many would, of you would know me like that, but as a shy kid, I didn't know what to expect. I was horrible at English, still am, horrible at any languages, Polish, barely could communicate. And the first person that came up to me was a man sitting right there, Russell. He came up to me and said, hi, introduce himself. He was the first friend I had in IES, and I'm glad to spend the past 13 years with him in a class. Been close, some years distant, but it's been a memorable journey ever since I met him. This journey for me has resulted in many things, many friends, over 200 
been coming and going throughout the 13 years. And I've had to listen to 26 long and difficult Ishaq Hosseini speeches. And the last one twice. But this journey has been amazing. And I'm proud to stand here. To graduate in a sea of different cultures and nationalities, our class has had fights, wars, arguments, and discussions. But one thing that's come out of it is our ability to reconciliate, forgive, and forget. And this is what makes the class of 2020 very special to me. Even though moments, there have been moments in our life where we've wanted to basically punch someone across the face, when time has come, we've all forgiven each other, forgotten, and we stood here together, graduating all together. All of you have given me something special. And whether it is, whether if I've known you for 13 years or just two, from Bonnie give it, showing me how to be patient, I was quite unpatient and had anger issues, from, and Daniel showing me how to laugh and have fun from my serious persona, and Natalia, who showed me how, what it means to be a good friend and how friendship actually should be. All of you have given me something and something I will take with myself and have become part of my personality and become of me. So I would like to thank you for that. I would like to quote a Dr. Seuss quote from one of his books. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far, and face up to your problems, whatever they are. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know, you'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. Step with care and great tact, and remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft, and never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, indeed you will. I love this school, and I gotta admit, and I, this part of my speech, I wrote, and Bonnie stole from me, but the school is not the best. We're not, we don't have the best facilities, nor we are the highest accl acclimated in the school, school. But what we do have is community, and what we do have is our teachers. And I would say, having friends all over Poland in different international schools, our teachers are exemplary. Because, because of our short size, our teachers are able to have a relation with students that are unlike anything I've seen. And for me, throughout my IB years, one teacher has been quite special to me and has been my role model, and that is Mr. Bradley. He is one of those teachers who has a lot of work, has a lot of stress, and sometimes you see him stress running around the hallways. But every time he entered at Tuesday after an eight hour shift into a history HL class, he would always smile because he loved his job. And I aspire to be like that. I aspire to come into my job and just be happy no matter what happens before that moment. I aspire to be like him. He's been there for me in and outside school, and so has Mr. E Ms. Iza, Mr. Uh, Mr. O'Keefe, Mr. Krasner, and all the teachers in IES in every moment when I've needed them to be there. I would say thank you for them. I've had good moments with all my teachers, from watching Barney with Mr. Knox in kindergarten on VHS tapes to Mr. McBride. Yes, even Dr. McBride. We have had a feisty and in quite difficult uh, relationship, but he is one of the only teachers that actually stood and had an argue with me. And as my classmates know, I love arguing. And that's what IES is. It's not a school, it's a community where teachers help students out of their hearts more than ever required for them. I will thank all the teachers for that. Please, let's have a round of applause for all the teachers and facilities in IES. <laughs> Class of 2020, I would like to thank you. I didn't know how to end this speech because I never wanted this chapter in my life to end. I just don't. I'm scared of the future. This journey has brought me so much joy, wonderfulness, and leaving the school, leaving the building where I spent my entire life, and leaving all of you, it's something I still don't want to do, and still something I haven't fully accepted. I don't know if we'll ever be able to keep in contact. I know everyone says, and we're probably going to plan ways right after this graduation ceremony, how we're going to keep in contact and how, but as history says, things never work out. And if they don't, I want to thank you for making me a better person. Thank you for showing me how to laugh when I'm sad. Thank you for the hugs when I cried. Thank you for the words of encouragement when I felt I got too much. Thank you for spending the best moments of my life with me. Thank you to all my classmates and teachers for making me feel as I as another home and forgiving for me for my mistakes. I will never forget this chapter in my life or any of you. And yes, this moment is sad and I am quite sad, but at the same time, 
I'm really happy. So something could make me feel the sad. It makes me feel alive. It makes me feel human. The only way I could feel the sad now is if something really good happened before. So I guess I'll take the bad with the good. And what I'm feeling right now is a beautiful sadness. Thank you and the best of luck to all of you. Thank you, Madame. Very touching. Uh, we are now up to the final commencement speech. Uh, I have been at IAS for 14 years, so about the same amount of time that you have gone through all of your schooling to date. And I'm very proud uh, to send you guys off into the great unknown with this, uh, with these final words. Uh, my grandmother had a very simple saying, aim high, two words, uh, two simple words that were always spoken with her radiant smile. She was a very positive person. I am not so succinct with my speech, so I'm going to attempt to interpret those words with some more. And I'm starting with a quote from Rainier Maria Rilke, who's a poet. And it goes as such, perhaps it will turn out that you are called to be an artist. Then take that destiny upon yourself and bear it, its burdens and its blessings without ever asking what compensation might come from outside. For the creator must be a world unto himself and find everything in himself and in nature, which is also of course within. I reread this line from one of the first books that struck me, Letters to a Young Poet, as I was preparing for this speech, totally by random. And I was struck by the paradox of beauty and burden, much like Vedant was talking about sadness and happiness being one thing. It's almost like the image of an old world Jew carrying milk pails on his bony shoulders. You feel the burden. And yet when you take a step back, you realize it's also beautiful. We concentrate too much on the beauty in life, or at least focus on it. Those things we wish to attain, uh, the places we wish to see, the men and women we wish to love, and we often forget that these beautiful things are burdens too, that every choice carries a cost, and that the earth that sprouts beans in the fall was plowed by the sweat of a man's brow in the spring. The two are one. What if we embraced the burden as the beauty itself? If we smiled at the thought of all the work that's required to become an engineer or an artist or just myself? What if we fantasized about the work, the love of the work? What then could we accomplish? Because the earth is never solid, even if it pretends to be, it is never easy. There is no such thing as Pax Romana even though history teachers like Mr. Bradley teach us that there are, or there were. Enduring stability is a lie. And we only need to look around us on this makeshift stage in our surgical masks to know that that is true. You're graduating. What does that mean? Your choices are your own now. Your parents who are behind you are behind you. They can influence you and guide you and they will try to, but they cannot control you, nor can your teachers nor your principals. So your next school is really the school of making choices. Choices in what degree to get, choices in jobs, where to live, choices in boyfriends, girlfriends, to marry or not to marry, to become a poet or become a teacher. Choices in what seems risky versus what appears to be safe. Be careful with those. Because no matter the choices, the results always fluctuate. The world outside us always fluctuates. Achievements will be followed by failures. Marriages sometimes do end in divorce. Civil liberties that we work so hard to obtain are just as swiftly taken away. Given this reality, I want to complete my analogy. 
you want to be wise decision makers. You want to be captains of your ship on these turbulent seas. Where then is your anchor or what is your anchor? How can you remain solid and buoyant and not get tossed overboard, get confused, foggy, or even drowned? How can you learn how to make choices rather than have choices make you? Back to Mr. Rilke, the poet. I beg of you, do not look outside yourself. Go into yourself. You are the anchor, and you are the vessel, too. But this anchor and this vessel needs to be forged by work, something you do by yourself and often in silence. So I want to ask you what practices you can keep with you that will help shape and refine this anchor and this vessel so that you have weight and depth and some substance about you so that you will not fluctuate when the world around you does. And you can hold steady through the storms when they come as they inevitably will. Silence is a good thing. We can listen when we're silent. We can hear music when we're silent. We can even perceive the wind or the car engines as music. At least we can hear the cars go by us and we can form impressions. We can imagine when we're silent. We can feel our solitude in the silence and we can be okay with it. It's in that imagination, you can even call it your muse, that we find our deepest callings, our most true principles and our will. You're adults now. You're able to order a martini. You're able to vote. You're able to shop on your own. You're able to wear the fashion you desire. You don't have to wear what your mom puts out on the bed for you. You're able to make a down payment on a house. The art of adulthood is making decisions. The art of childhood is abiding your muse, the realm of the silent and private imagination. Don't lose that. The two are one. A child can play with a blade of grass for hours alone. Do you remember? A child does not need toys, can make her own. A child can remain amused by herself, can invent friends even when there are none, can make decisions without making them, just flow. You're young enough to remember the child well, and I imagine you already I was more creative. I certainly wasn't so stressed. When did stress begin? I do. <laughs> At some point, it does change. As adults, we forget how to be alone. We fill our minds with so much clutter so that we're not alone. And never has that been more easy than today. Sun up with notifications, sun down with Netflix. And in between, not so much silence. We sleep alone, we wake alone, even if someone's next to us. And while waking, we mostly forget this essential and primary existence. We limit our dream time to the subconscious. It doesn't come so naturally to us anymore. And that's the key difference in being an adult. We have to work at it. We have to work at being alone and maintaining that child spirit. This is the burden that carries the beauty the milk in its pails on the bony shoulders. We have to make routines for ourselves. We have to carve out space in our busy and noisy days for our most sacred practices, where solitude replaces stimulation and where recreation is replaced by creativity and generation. Whatever those practices are, those are yours. Journaling, drawing, painting, reading, meditating, kickboxing, yoga, Pilates, sound healing, biking, jogging, swimming, MMA, dancing. If you haven't done so already, please take up a musical instrument. Practice its scales. Practice waking up to silence and not reaching so immediately to fill it from the outside. Make your own music. Practice at being alone. Why am I stressing this? Why is it so important? What does alone even mean? 
it means, if you look it up, all one. That is true. I am all one. Two different connotations. I am all one or I'm alone. They're the same thing. So if we can feel all one rather than alone, then we might be able to handle all the fluctuations that are certainly to come. We might even bring them on because we know that change is good for the soul. It's how we evolve. And isn't that what we all want? To never stop growing? So, on this graduation day, this momentous day, I want to announce for you a new kind of school. You're not leaving. You're not going anywhere. This school is one that never ends and never begins. Never get tired of them. Never get tired of learning who you are and never get tired of the work of learning who you are, of shaping and forging who you are. Because I promise you, there is no end to the burdens of life. And that is such a good thing because there is no end to the beauty of it too. That is my speech for you. And on this note, the school prepared a very special closing video for you. That is a testament to everybody's unique creative self. And I hope Mr. Medi's going to cue it up for us. Some of you even took part. Get ready. Miss Isa Meschainska's beautiful inspiration for us. Thank God for good teachers.
still need the microphone, Maddie. There we go. So what do you want to do? You want to get your diplomas? Does anybody want to give a speech? Oh, well. <laughs> so I, no, I was joking. I would like to invite up the warm hearted, bearded man himself, our vice principal, Mr. Arthur O'Keefe, who's going to do the honors and announce you to the stage to receive your well earned diploma, which Miss Isa will also get stationed, and Mr. Bradley will also be here. You have a parting gift, also, a surprise gift bag. So let's set all this up. It's much nicer up here, shade. Lovely. You'll really enjoy it. Well, milk it. Stay as long as you can, Vladek. Okay, well, we are going in alphabetical order, so we are beginning with Mr. Adam Kwadnitsky. Come on up. The music. Now we're going to invite Mr. Adam El Shafe. Mr. Denny's Ercosar. Mr. Russell Ferales. Mr. Veden Harvani. Vladimir Gonshaw. Okay, 
We can now welcome Miss Bonnie Murphy. Miss Paula Pituka. Miss Natalia Brasello. Mr. Dominic Schlossig. Mr. Victor Schwentohowski. Mohammed Mohammed Taufik. Welcome to the stage. Miss Dong Shini. Last but not least, wait, wait, wait. Student with most growth, Miss Lin Chuan Ru. So now everyone has to put their tassels from the right to the left. Yeah. Do, you, do you want to take from there or you want to come up here? Yeah, you can come up here. Come on. You want to come up here? So obviously we are at the last stage for the most iconic photo of this part of the ceremony. We're all going to stand up, stand up, stand up, well, but mainly the graduates. Ow. Not too close, but we'll obviously the short people close to the front. No, 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 wait, wait. Oh. Daniel, Daniel, no. Okay, we need to get ready. We're gonna pass our hat. Oh. Just get ready. Hat in hand, hand on hat, ready. So now toss your hats in the air of the graduating class. Of
Let me make some announcements real quick. So Maddie can turn down the music. So dear class, be aware the diplomas you have there are certified copies of the diplomas that are in the United States right now getting stamped. So those are certified copies that you can use for your university's purposes. Uh, the second one is kind of just a duplicate, but we're waiting for your diplomas to come back from the United States. They will be here probably in about three weeks, three, four weeks, and you can pick them up. Um, I think that's it for the show. We're just gonna wait for the food to arrive. So there is cold drinks and some snacks in the cafeteria. If you wanna keep the gown on, you can. If you wanna get out of it, you can. And the meal will be at three o'clock. We will be having a lovely warm dinner together. Thank you for your patience in that ultimately unique ceremony. Mm -hmm.